Okay, so here's a good shot of the two holes. The upper hole is going to be covered in the clear silicone caulking, and then the bottom hole is going to be covered in just a little piece of micro pore tape. And we're going to use this, this is our Glad Mini Round, give you an idea of the size there. So, about two and a half inches tall, two and a half inches or so wide. Easy, easy, inexpensive way to get into agar. Okay, this is micro pore tape, some kind of medical surgical tape. Let's air through and keep the bacteria and contaminants out. So, all you have to do, fluff a little strip. Throw it on there. I'm a little obsessive, so I like two. The second one can just be a small one. Just cover it right there. Then, we're going to have the silicone caulk, which is hopefully still flowing. Yay! Now, this is the difficult part. I want you to see this. So we have our hole right here. So we're going to start on the back side. Doesn't really matter, but push it through and make your circle like on the filter bag so you leave a good plug for the needle to use. And then you can see how on the top it sticks up. So we're just going to smear that into the one on the top. Bingo, bingo, we're done. Toothpaste. So make you a little smear on the top. Poke through to the bottom so it connects. Basically becomes one contiguous piece of silicone top and bottom. Another piece of tape on the top. And that's it. You're done. There's your paste your pasty whites. Easy agar plate. Now this is our agar powder here, telephone brand, as you can see by the picture of the telephone there. Almost any Asian grocery store, some Indian grocery stores will have these. It's sort of like an Asian jello or gelatin that's unflavored. They make a, like a coffee dessert with it, so it's pretty common, um, innocuous. Mine keeps it behind the counter for some reason, but telephone brand agar powder is what you're looking for. Runs like a buck fifty for a package. It's um, what is that? Twenty-five grams. So that's probably two batches of agar there for you know buck fifty, seventy-five cents a batch. And the glad rounds are reusable. Now you're all set. Our happy pasty plates. So it's just silicone plug and micropore tape on the top of the mini round. Glad mini rounds. We're going to mix up some agar in a little bit, pour it into the bottom of these, and then put them in the pressure cooker. Okay, people were asking about the mycelium jar lid. Let me give you a quick rundown. It's one of the um, reusable canning jar lids. Backside has two holes. Each one of them is one quarter, well, I'm sorry, one quarter inch in diameter. The one on the right has silicone, a little blob of silicone. It also goes through the hole. And there's another blob on the top, so as you can see, they give you a self-healing injection port. Your syringe full of the liquid culture or liquid inoculant goes right through that and lets you inoculate without having to open the jar, which is really nice. And this fine piece of craftsmanship here is a piece of synthetic filter disc. You can get them on Amazon. And it's secured with the RTV glue. Got that at Walmart. Um, almost any automotive supply place carries it. RTV, got to be the high temperature gasket maker. So it'll survive the pressure cooking. Then you use that just a little bit around the edges of this because you want it, you don't want to block that hole. You got to make sure that you've got good air exchange and gas exchange through that hole. So it goes on the top of the jar. Gas exchange happens through the patch. And then the injections happen through the port. Let's run over some of the supplies here that we're going to be using for the Pasty Whites Easy Agar Tech. Got your Glad Mini Rounds with our sweet little custom made lid, silicone on the right, 
micropore cloth tape on the left over their respective quarter inch holes. Then, uh, from any Asian store, Asian grocery store, you should be able to find the telephone brand agar powder. Don't picture the telephone there in case you're confused easily. Um, you may have to ask for it or, shit, worst case scenario, take a screenshot showing the picture. Um, they use it like jello or gelatin for sort of a coffee based dessert. Like a buck fifty and make two three batches for the glad round so it's really cheap. Then we also have the or this spray malt extract, plain light from the brew store. So there's your light malt extract. And the brewer's yeast also from, wait for it, the brewery store. Brewing store. There we go. So we're gonna put all this goodness together and make the magic happen. And there's a ton of sediment in there. Make you stir that, make sure you stir that up real well. And then, I usually only pour two. Two of them in there. About 150 ml. Oop, you don't even want to get it halfway. You only want a small layer in the bottom, about up to where the little line is embossed on the cup. You'll see it if you look real closely. More is not necessarily better because you just want a thin layer on the bottom. Benihana on. Okay. And that's all there, there really is to it. Put those on. Show you how we're going to wrap them up. The last special technique. That bugs me. That. And that. I'm going to show you how we pack them up. I know it's a little hard to see, and I don't want to tilt it too much, but you can see that there's only a small fraction of that Glade mini round that's full. Do not fill it all the way up. You just want a little thin layer in the bottom. Okay, so let's see if we can get this for you. We have A, which we'll call the top. Flip that over. And B, what great production values. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we start it with A. And we fold it up. A over to B. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to look good for you guys. Alright, A to B. Now, once we find the magic scissors, Since it's going to affect the overall length, what we're going to do is we're going to end up cutting off the top of that. I don't know, what do you call that? An inch, inch and a half or so? Bing, bing. Okay, so that's what we have. And this one in thirds. Just like that. And then like that. You want it kind of nice and flat to flatten out those edges. Then overlap it one more time because what you want is you want it to fit right on the lid. If you do this properly, it will fit right there on the lid of that agar jar. That's pretty close. We're going to put foil on top. That's about perfect. Again for you. So we have A. Now if we flip it over, we have B. B and A. 
flipping it over one more time, you can get this A at the top. So then, B, fold it over on top of A. And if it helps, we'll do this also. I have X and Y. So, I'm going to sort of turn that. I'm going to cut off B and A where they were marked. It's about an inch and a half or so. It doesn't have to be exact. It's not rocket surgery. We're back to X and Y. X goes in. Y goes on top of it. Smooth that down. And then fold that up. Should fit right there on the top of your little glad mini round like a happy little home. Happy little paper towel right there. Gonna give you another real quick look at the pasty plate jars here. This is a half pint jar. Basically, it's a larger version of what we're doing. You have the layer of nutrient rich material or media or medium down here in the bottom. Then on the top, you've got a way for fresh air to get in and gases to get out, and a way to inject liquid cultures down into there. So you can grow a nice culture on the top. Of this it's nice and flat so you can expect inspect it make sure there's no contaminants shoot a bunch of water through there shake it up a little bit we got my ceiling water suck it back out with the same syringe without even having to take it out and you're ready to knock up your grain spawn or whatever else you want to do